that didn't work out. Alright guys, we're here today to uh, build the Simple Copter Miniature V-Tail. Um, when you get your kit, it'll basically come like this. Two skids on the side, some zip ties. Um, if you're in a European country, maybe broke down a little bit more for just shipping stuff. Um, some of the things you're going to need is this little doohickey. You can, I'm going to have them on my website soon, but you can also buy them at uh, Office Depot. Uh, they're just little half inch by half inch gray looking uh, little sticky, semi-sticky things. I think they're a 3M product or something like that. Um, you're going to need some heat shrink right here, some Velcro. Uh, heat shrink, I would get six millimeter, some four millimeter, and some three if you can find it. It's kind of a little bit harder to find. Um, you're going to need a KK2 board. This one is from Buddy RC. It comes pre-flashed with a 1.12 software as opposed to the fine piece of equipment that Hobby King sells. It comes with a um, 1.6 hardware uh, software that flies fine unless you want to loop it. And if you loop it, it goes friggin' berserk. I can attend to that. Um, you'll also need some servo to mail-to-mail uh, -mail servo to go from your actual KK2 board, this part, to your receiver, which of course you also need. A receiver. Uh, that particular receiver I got from uh, Wispy Quads um, down in Florida. It's a Lemon RC long range miniature receiver. It seems to work pretty well unless you're behind your pickup truck and you're flying on the other side of your pickup truck at about 800 feet. Uh, standing right next to the metal, it kind of didn't work out, but that was my fault. You're going to need a couple little KK2 board um, pads, those are available on my site. Um, also, these are available on my site too, but you can get them elsewhere. Uh, here's a trick: you need the cake. Uh, sorry, the Sunny Sky. Sorry about the focus here. It's a manual camera. Sunny Sky 2204, 2300 kV motors. These things are very difficult to find right now because the Blackout Mini has made them extraordinarily popular, and um, and they're hard to find. Um, but People are going to come out with either copies of them or, or Sunny Sky, from what I understand, is really ramping up production on them, trying to get them going. Um, last and not least, you're going to need speed controllers. These are from Ready to Fly Quads, Wispy Quads. They're eight bucks a piece. Um, ready pre flash with the Simon K firmware. Uh, absolutely great. I just bashed one of these little speed controllers into a metal girder yesterday, and um, it still works. So, um, basically what you need, you're going to need a couple hand tools, a soldering iron. Uh, let's see, what do we got here? We got a zip tie gun, which is always a wonderful thing to have. Some inmost pliers. Uh, soldering gun, the best you can afford. And the last thing is solder. Uh, solder I use cranky. Um, I'm using Kester, Rosalind Core, the, 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 uh, 50th uh, 0.50 inch 1.2 millimeter I think it's a 60 40 mix um, really like it it's kind of expensive but you know a one pound spool lasts me a year and a half and I do a lot of soldering so uh, let's go ahead and get on to this build here okay first thing we got to do is we have to hook up the uh, motor plate to the bottom of the uh, motors and I would recommend using some blue Loctite, which is what they call, uh, you know, semi-permanent or medium strength. So you can get it back loose if you need to. But the cool thing about these Sunny Sky motors is the, uh, the plates are so well built that I've never, ever bent one. If you guys have seen much of my videos, I've definitely put them to the test. Um, but you want to put the screws on. Now keep in mind that these mounts go on a certain way. And so far I'm having a real issue getting the stupid thing to start. Come on. There you go. So you have two longer screws and two shorter screws. You just look at the bottom motor. It's pretty common sensey, but you know, 
I need to mention this because some people don't quite see things all the way. So we're going to put all four screws in this, make them, you know, relatively tight. You don't have to put a vice grip on it and tighten it down. Just, you know, when you're doing it, you want to crisscross, tighten, tighten, and then, you know, tighten these two and just kind of go crisscross. You don't want to get one super tight and the other one's kind of be, it's not a big deal, but it does help. So we're going to get all these motors uh, hooked up. And two things, uh, the Sunny Skies camp also came from Buddy RC. Um, he's doing his best to get as many in as possible. Um, like I said, he's trying his best. So keep in mind when you're doing this, there's a little concave. The screw obviously goes into the concave, not on the outside or whatever you call the cutout for the screw to sit inside of it. This, uh, these motors also come with a bunch of uh, cap screws. And I don't know for certain, but I'm guessing it's for a uh, like a carbon fiber type framed, uh, thin carbon fiber or aluminum type frame mini uh, to go through the bottom of it to go directly in the motor without using these plates at all. So when you're all done, you get a whole bunch of these to put in your little box in case you ever need them. So we got all the motors done, and uh, we're going to the next spot. All right, let's talk about the frame. Um, painting it. Can't stand to see these things not painted, so please paint it. I've chosen to go, drum roll please, with pink and yellow on the bottom. Um, forgive me, I've got a bunch of crap in there, but I don't care. Um, so the way this works is when it's uh, you know flying upright, it's pink. You do a roll, it'll turn yellow. I did the kind of the inside of it, so it'd be all yellow all the way around, pink, yellow. Um, for my FPV bird, this is going to be more of my fun one, just fly around the neighborhood and stuff, uh, to torment the kids. Uh, my FPV one, I went with black. I did a little red on the inside just to make it look cool. And um, But this one is what I fly when I'm just going out to fly FPV. The, uh, yesterday, I was flying inside a building and kind of hit it really, really, really hard, about 30 miles an hour. I smashed into a, a steel girder and uh, did pretty good. I broke two props. Uh, the motors came loose, uh, zip ties, and I got that big old ugly gouge. And I think I'm actually going to fix that. Usually I'm not that vain, but I am going to fix that one. Um, so that's what I did for my FPV. Going pink for the fun one. And uh, I built this for my buddy who actually helped me design this copter. This is his. He went with purple and yellow. Actually, I went with it. I didn't care what he wanted. He didn't care either. He just wants to fly. Um, good guy. But, um, so that's how I paint it. I use a, like a plastic type coating paint um, from Walmart. Plastic coat, not plastic coat, Krylon something. It's, either way, it's good for plastic also. I'll do a light paint, like a, a single paint like this. I'll sand it, paint it again, sand it lightly, and then I'll shoot a, uh, some clear onto it to make it have a little bit of a shine if you want that. If you don't want that, it doesn't really matter. You don't need the shine. And, and it makes it a little less heavy if you do it. I don't think it adds much weight to make it shiny, but um, either way, that's what I went with. So this is the uh, frame we're gonna build. This is hopefully gonna be one of y'all's. First thing you guys wanna do is you wanna take a pencil, put your frame together, you know, mount holes, nice like that, and draw out where your KK2 board's gonna be. This opening is oversized, so if you wish, to put the KK2 board in there with the plastic, it'll fit. Now, it'll fit on all my frames, but it's kind of tight on the other frames. Um, I'm going to take the plastic off this because it is dropped down inside of it, and I think that it offers plenty of protection. And I just want to lose the weight of the other plastic case. But if you want to keep it, you know, by all means do. Um, so I'm going to remove the case and go ahead and set that in there with the pads. All right, let's talk about this Buddy RC uh, KK2 board. The uh, I called Buddy a couple of months ago, or five, six months ago, I said, is there any way we can get a KK2 board from you guys, because people don't want to wait for Hobby King, and Hobby King at the time was completely out of them, and they tend to do that a lot. So um, so I told him what I thought Hobby King's board needed to be better as far as like putting the plus and minus on the buzzer and the power tap. Uh, after blowing up one of the Hobby King boards, I thought that would have been nice to have had that. Um, and they did that. They also came to the case. Uh, I thought it was a really good idea. Um, one thing to note before you start stickering this thing on here, which <laughs> stuck in my hand already. Um, damn it. So uh, 
you've got these are the parts that actually hook up to the actual receiver and I have a bad habit of, of actually adhering this thing and not remembering <laughs> but to went to what so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you just in case you do this before you stick her but aileron is number one the top one then it's elevator throttle rudder and this is your uh, switch, uh, your, your, it goes to the gear switch on the, uh, or your gear input onto your uh, receiver. And uh, that enables you to have auto level on and auto level off. Um, again, with the Buddy RC board, it has a newer software. So uh, one of the problems that Hobby King seems to always have with their KK2 boards is they always ship it with uh, inferior uh, firmware. The first ones that came out, they wouldn't auto level. I mean, they would, but it took like, 10 seconds to get it to go level. Not much help when you're really screwing up. And uh, the second one that came out, the one that's basically like this, had the problem with if you flip it, it went berserk. Anything over 270 degrees and went crazy. It still does. Um, they had not fixed that, and I don't honestly expect them to ever fix it because they never do. Um, they also have a new one out that has a detachable screen. I don't exactly know what the allure to that would be. Um, it doesn't save any weight. It doesn't really do uh, anything that I can think of that would be helpful. Um, I, I honestly I shook my head when I saw that, and I have not ordered one. I've not seen one. Don't plan on ordering one unless you know everyone is out of everything else. So, um, as far as stickering this little bad boy up, I've already pulled the stickers off. I take and cut these uh, pads in half, lay them on both sides, cover up all your little things that you need to know where all the outs are. And, uh, and also when I place it inside the actual um, frame, I kind of put it more towards the top because I run my receiver uh, transmitter for the FPV out the back and I need as much room as possible. If you'll notice in these frames, there is actually uh, the lower end is cut out more because you have a slightly, the motor is slightly pointed you know, this way. So I want to have good airflow going down I think I, I, I went a little bit too much on it, so I may revise that and bring it out a little bit in between the two. I'll probably break the difference because it'll give you a little bit more stuff down here to actually hook your uh, transmitter to. But I'll go over that a little later. I want to get this thing stuck in here and uh, get going on this. So without further ado, since I'm running my mouth here too much, as always, come on. So. Squared up, kind of edge it towards the top. And just kind of push down. No crazy amount of force you got to put on. These pads are extremely sticky. If you ever have to take them out, it'll rip the pad in half. You know, have to get new pads. But so we got our KKT board on. All right. Uh, next thing I want you to do is to go ahead and uh, put your arms on temporarily. Just you know, don't use the top plate. Obviously, just screw through the uh, thing just to get it in place. You can see where everything's going to go and makes life a little easier. Normally, uh, as far as hooking up my ESCs, I almost, in fact, I've always used a hot glue gun to hook them in there. I'm going to try. I'm not sure if it's going to be a good idea or not, if it's going to work with the crap. But I'm, ow, I'm going to, damn it hurt. I'm going to go ahead and try to uh, use some of this, um, the pads that I use for the bottom of this. I'm actually going to try hooking them up with that just to see if it works, see if it's a, a good thing or a bad thing. I don't know. I'm just going to do it because I want to. Uh, you can use a hot glue or use whatever you want, but we're going to go ahead and hook all the servo, I mean the uh, speed controllers up to the board, and, um, and I'll show you how to wire it. This is going to be, if you've ever built any of my other uh, copters, especially when you put the speed controls inside of them, you have to uh, hook um, extension cables, extension wires up to the uh, speed controls to get out to the arms. This one looks like we won't have to do any kind of extension at all. So I'm going to put this one right about here. Next one's going to go here to go to the front arms. But I believe I'll be able to make make it up to the front arms without any extensions. It looks like it'll be just fine. I'm going to kind of really snug it in there. But uh, let me get them glued in and I'll, or taped in or whatever, and I'll get right back to you. All right, um, as far as the wiring goes on this, we, uh, I literally started doing another video showing how I normally wire it, but then I came up with a new idea. I'm hoping this will work, 
and if it does then great if not I won't ever show it to you so I took the long wire here it was longer until I resoldered it back on but either way long wire long wire from the back one I cut this one shorter what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this fourth one and I'm going to use it to wrap the wires um, actually I'm not going to cut them to strip it I hope this is never done with this long before so we'll see what happens but if this works and you got one big old solder for all four wires and we'll solder that to the main plug oh yes I can feel it that might be a little bit too much wire but we'll see what happens let's just go ahead and put them together I hope this works it's much easier might not need all that wire I know it won't. All right, sorry, a uh, stupid chip filled up. So I wrapped the wire, got it around, and uh, I didn't need as much of that wire, so I cut it off, and I took and I soldered it. Like I said, you're gonna you miss it because it cut out, but either way. Um, you're gonna need to make sure it soaks in really well, gets a nice little covering on the whole thing, and uh, you know, it solders all the way around it and hopefully soaked into it nicely. So you got one main lead there. We're going to actually, there's a couple things I, I left out. In fact, i got to find one. Um, here's one. Just so happen to have one sitting right here in front of me. It's really freaking long, but all right. We need, we, let me back this up a little bit. Okay. You need a little uh, red BEC wire to go to your power tap for your board. You don't have to have this to operate the board. All this does, when you plug it in, looking at the plus right there, all this does is tell the board how much power is in your battery. Um, and you can set an alarm on the board to beep at, let's say if you have a three cell battery, if you want to start beeping at 10 volts to let you know it's time to land, your little buzzer thing will start beeping at 10 volts. If you don't put this on there, the board will work fine, but you won't have that beeper. But there are other options. You can buy an external beeper for your uh, battery, but I don't use that. So we've also got to get this little wire right here on here also. But I'm going to wait till the very end and, and pop it in there after I get the main wire soldered onto it. So let's go ahead and uh, do that. I probably need to change my camera angle because you can't see crap what I'm doing here but let's just change that camera angle and all right um this is going to be a really hard angle for me to solder at but we're going to use our little handy thingy here the little grabber thing so i can uh, pre tin up this wire and i just want to say again that if i did not have these funky angles would be life would be a lot easier. Now again, you can use a little grabby thing here to uh, to hold the wire in place, but and I like to just do it holding it so I can shake and all that. But either way, as long as you pre tin a good hot iron, you're gonna get these two, two guys together like so. Hold it till it. So we got that there. This is a fun part. We're gonna come down. Just make sure you have enough wire, because when the top comes over, it's gonna it's gonna pinch that down. So I'm gonna cut it right about to there. Strip it. Tin it. You want to kind of tin it thick. Now here's how I do this. Again, there's probably better ways to do it, but I actually take on the uh, gun and I put some solder on top of it. Lay it in there. Just press down a little bit, not too long. Just make sure it's covered on there. Oh, that's nice. You just want to leave it just long enough so it doesn't, you know, desolder the two of them apart. So we got the whole positive wire hooked up. This is where you want your six inch or six millimeter heat shrink to get around that big ball of stuff. Um, slide that on there. Stick it in there nice and tight. Get your cool heaty thingy up. You can use a match. 
this thing is so cool. Oh, sorry. And before I had this unit over here, the soldering thing, I used to not really look forward to soldering. It just was a pain, but now it's just wonderful. I love it. So we're going to do our negative wire, and when I get that all done, we'll get back with you. That look good? Yeah. Okay, we got the other one done. It was not nearly as pretty as this one, but it's done. So basically push them down, bring them out about two inches beyond the frame, maybe a little more just to be safe. Snip them off. And that's what we're going to hook your connector up to, whether it's a Dean's connector, uh, the Hobby King X60, one of these, or whatever you're supposed to use. I use the Dean's just because I've got it on every damn thing I own. So uh, that'll go on there, but I'm not in a hurry. Let's go ahead and, um, well, let's do it. What the hell? This is when your little holder thing comes in handy. I'm not sure how in focus this is, but this is really a joy doing it around this camera, I'm telling you. Strip a little bit off each one. Pre tin. I'm sorry, do it right. Twist it. Twist it. Pre tin. Both sides. Clean the crap off your spongy thing. Uh, we got to hook the, the hell I do with it. Oh. All right, on the back of this thing, it actually has a plus and a negative. The negative is this one, and the plus is this one. Very important. If you don't do that right, <laughs> guess what happens? It's not pretty, and it usually smells really bad, and it's very expensive. So this is my plus side. I would suggest not being lazy just go turn it up so again you just put a little bit of solder on it I want to do that first and remember to cut your piece of heat shrink usually I use five for this four or five this is six it doesn't matter um, slide the heat shrink on place it up on top of it so just hold it against it Put them top, kind of watch them flow together, and release. And I do is I check to make sure I got covering all the way on the side. Ow! Damn it, that's hot. And the side, you see it's got a good length. It's not perfect, but it's, it ain't going nowhere, trust me. So do that, flip her over. I'm going to go the other side just because it's the way the natural of the wires are running. So we're still in the frame here. So. And pre ten. That didn't work. There we go. Oh, heat shrink. Yes, this guy knows what he's doing, that's for sure. Actually, usually I would have just forgotten and had to redo it, so that's pretty good. I actually remember before I did it. Lay it on top. Again, if you don't have quite this hot of a soldering iron, it might take you 8 or 10 seconds to get it to go together. Damn it. Right, so it's hot. Done. Give it a second to cool down. Everything looks great. I'm going to bring these little bad boys up here. Use our handy... Gun. You can also use like a uh, just like a, a heat gun, like a paint gun. Just have to be careful; it's kind of big. You don't melt all the crap down here. So there you go. Okay, we're gonna hook up a uh, side of the motors on, and there's two options you got. You can I only got one option, but you got two options possibly. Um, you can use bullets, which are really big, unless you can find some uh, two millimeters, a three and a half millimeter, just they're just quite huge. Um, the benefits of having bullets is that if, if a motor comes off, it'll hopefully pull loose from the bullets and not rip the wires out of your motor, which is bad because motors are expensive. Um, the benefits of not going with bullets is you have a little less area for failure. 
in my case I don't have any two millimeter bullets and the ones that I've ever seen are always really really long and they're kind of obnoxious looking but might not be a bad idea to get them um, I'm just gonna keep an extra motor in my box in case I rip up one of the, uh, the wires out but you want to cut your heat shrink I'm using three millimeter heat shrink on here and god I need my glasses I can't see crap um, oh there we go wow um, nothing worse than getting 49 years old I know I don't look at them I look like a 25 year old but I can't can't see like one so the thing about brushless motors are you solder them up whatever way you want to just randomly pick three wires and hook them to three wires if the motor is spinning the wrong way and you want to spin the other way take any two wires it doesn't matter which two and switch them and that will reverse the rotation of the motor so we're going to solder these and then we're not going to heat shrink these down until after we do a test run on the motors. Um, once we do the test run, we'll determine which ones are backwards. In my last build, all four motors were backwards. I've never had that happen before, but, you know, it happens. So we're going to pretend the wires, and we're going to solder them on there. I'm going to go ahead and just do one real quick for you. Just Not that you haven't figured out soldering just yet. Hopefully it's a piece of cake. These don't take much. So, in a smart man would go ahead and put it onto the actual soldering jiggy thing but I'm lazy probably gonna pay for it but put them together touch the solder these go together really fast on this so ow so there you go first wire we're gonna do all of them that way you'll slide this on here temporarily until you do a test you don't want those two wires touching together and then throttle it up because it will possibly burn up your speed controller so just want to be really careful when you do your throttle up. I'm going to get the motors. I'm going to get all of them on, but you get the idea. You got, it doesn't matter at this point in time. These are your rear motor wires and the fronts. Let's get all the motors soldered on, and we'll go ahead and stick them on. I'm going to do one with the uh, little thing holding them together. Basically, two little clamps, bring them up next to each other. I mean, it really does make life easier. God, it's dirty. Still dirty. I had to clean my sponge. So you basically just, I don't even think I pretend that one, be the way. Just. So easy peasy if you use the clamps. I'm just, I don't know, I'm lazy, but it's probably a smart move to use the clamps. All right. Okie dokie, we've got the motors all soldered up and we're going to attach it. The uh, very high tech way of attaching these motors is to use zip ties <clears throat> um, all right these little packs of uh, little square things like I said I got them at Office Depot uh, I think I'm gonna start carrying them on the side because they're, they're like four bucks for five sets of these which I'll never friggin use um, so if I can get a hold of some I'll put them on the website uh, basically to attach we're gonna zip tie one thing about the zip ties you want to cross zip tie you want to run one one way and one the other way and it just pulls the motor back down flat so I run the wires kind of to the inside just place it on top of the pads snug it up it'll kind of hold it kind of doesn't but uh, it's enough to get the zip tie started now what I mean by opposite is we're going to run this one the other way which means putting on this side if you don't have a zip tie gun, which is $14 at Uline, get one. If if, uh, if you don't have one handy and you want to build it anyway, it's fine, but you have to do things like, uh, like this to put one on top kind of loose and the other one on the bottom and kind of twist and it's just a pain to do it that way but it does work um, so we just installed the motors a lot quicker than having to do uh, you know screws and stuff like that uh, do make sure you put the right <laughs> I, I guess there theoretically isn't a right and wrong motor to put on but I would put the back ones on the back motors and the front ones on the front motors if that makes sense um, your spacing I mean I put it right near the edge then if you're a first-timer or not used to it, you can hold it up there. 
you kind of see where the back is, hold your finger there and put it on. You want to leave some space in the middle. The reason you're leaving space in the middle, I don't think you're going to get into it. There's a little bit of a, a shaft stain on the bottom here. You don't want it to be touching the tape because it can create friction and um, friction is a bad thing. It takes away performance, takes away battery time, heats up your motor. Um, we're also going to go into a prop, talking about props for these things because these motors are rated for 5.3 props which is like putting a donut tire on a Lamborghini. These motors can handle a whole lot more, they can put a lot more power than a 5.3 can actually do. Um, and the 5.3s are horribly annoying, they buzz like a little gnat in your ear. So um, the 6.4.5 prop is what I recommend using on this motor, it makes this thing into a beast of power, I mean a lot of power, which we will demonstrate after we get this thing all put together. And I got a demo video I'm working on that's has really kicked my butt because of uh, I'm not very good at FPV and I've been trying to learn how to be good at FPV because that's what this thing's really really designed to do. I mean it's fun to fly around and have a good time with it in the yard but man you get this thing a hundred feet away it is not easy to find. I mean it, it it's it's better than most little quadcopters because you know there's absolutely no directional you know output on those that you can see which way they're going. So it's, triangle with some lights maybe but this one at least you can kind of tell when you point it at you you can see that nose drop down and you know you can tell that sucker's coming at you as it comes by so either way let me get these motors on here and we'll move to whatever step I figure we need to do next which I'll make up as we go where's the button okay we're going to hook up the uh, receiver very important to the board so that's where your little five wire doohickeys come in handy. All right, um, five of them. I wish I made some smaller gauges. These obviously don't need to be this big. So when we're hooking these up, make sure the white wire or the if it's JR type, they'll be orange. The light wire goes to the inside. Make sure you get it on the prongs. So the number one, if you guys remember, tell me it is correct aileron. I think. Where's an old board? Ah. First one is aileron. So, on these orange receivers, it's like impossible to see anything, but there it is. So, on the orange receiver, the white wire goes up. If you can kind of see what this is, it's, you know, as the pins are up, the white wire goes to the top of these because it doesn't really have a mark on them, but I just took a guess and prayed and it worked. So, we're going to go to, let's see, we got bind, throttle, aileron third one over so number one aileron third on the on the uh, lemon receiver my bad so wipe the inside number two it goes to elevator and there's the elevator number three throttle wipe to the inside again throttle on this is the second set of pins on Futaba, it'll be told. I think it actually runs in the exact. These run the exact order of a Futaba, but on JR or Spectrum, they're they're a little you know weird, which I don't know why they do it. But I kind of actually like the Futaba way of doing the wire running. Um, so number four is rudder. We're just checking again. Make sure we're rudder. Make sure all your white pins are lined up on the top of this particular receiver. If you look at like an orange receiver, if I have one. I do. Orange receiver here has a thing that says an S on the side. I would zoom into that, but if you look at the side of this receiver, it has an S. S means signal, signal means white. So you're, when you plug into this, if you're plugging into this, your white wire would go, which is the signal wire, would go to the top. Again, kind of like this other receiver. But that's how you know. It has an S on it or some kind of mark to show you where the white or orange wire, if you have a JR styled which look like, well, I don't have one, but um, like that. So, what have we got left? We got one more? Oh, we threw our wire away, that's good. So, um, last one is gear. This will uh, activate your auto level, and your auto level will be activated on your radio by the gear switch, and it has like a gear written on the receiver, which is good. So, at this point, uh, I can, oh, well, let's look at the uh, receivers, uh, the e ESCs, my bad. Let me look, see how wide I am here. Let's go a little wider. 
Okay, very important. This is the front of your copter. Let's make sure I'm still good on that. Yes, nice. Okay, front left is number one. So you find that little output and that goes into your number one slot. Again, white goes towards the inside on this. So number one. Number two is your right front motor. This is all very important because if you do it right, this sucker's going to pop right off the ground perfect. So white, number two. Here's a tricky one. Number three is the back right motor. That is your number three motor. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Had a little delay in uh, whatever's going on here. So back to this. Uh, number three is this motor in the back. And it goes into your number three slot. Lost my glasses again. Number four, back left. Follow it up. Number four, can route it around, make it look nice and pretty ish. And that goes in the number four slot. All right, so white's on the inside, white's on the inside. Make sure your receiver is set up. At this point in time, I need to cover all my wires uh, with some heat shrink, make sure it's over the top of it. We'll do a, a flaming test, make sure all the blacks are together, the reds are together, and your wires are covered up. We're going to do a, I'm going to go ahead and bind the receiver, and then we'll program the board, and we'll put the top back on. I know I'm forgetting something, but we got to hook this down. I'm going to probably put it up in the front here, if I can get it up in this area. So let me, uh, let me get to that. Alright, uh, when you're setting up your radio, um, you need to find a fresh channel. We're going to set this up as an airplane or an acro. Um, so add new model, create, uh, model name. I don't want to go through all that, but I'm just going to leave it alone. Put your name in there. Um, on a JR Spectrum type of radio, I'm getting a little grumbly voice. You're going to want to reverse your aileron. So we're going to go into, never mind, we're just going to choose this model. We're going to servo setup. We're going to not go to travel. We're going to go to reverse. You want to reverse your aileron and your elevator. You leave your throttle normal and your rudder normal. So that's your two things you got to do in the radio to set it up. As far as binding, hopefully you know how to bind, but if you don't, here we go. Hold on. All right, for first time binders, turn your radio off. Get your bind plug, figure out which one of these little doohickeys in the receiver is your bind. This one has a B on it, so that's your bind. You put the plug on the bind, like so. It's gonna be, oh hell, I gotta cover all these wires up or I'll blow something up. Okay, we got all the, uh, I need a damn battery. Crap. Battery. Okay. So, radio off. Bind plug in. We're going to plug the wire in. Pray there's no smoke. Oh, okay. That's a good sign. If you'll notice, the light is blinking over here. It's ready for binding. So you press your bind plug and mine or button button. That's that on that on the DX6. It's got a lever. Kind of pull the radio away from it. Binding. DSM2 22 milliseconds 1024 resolution. Bind complete. And that should turn solid. Important, boys and girls, now remove your plug. Because if you repower this on without removing your plug, you'll have to bind it all over again. So now that we got the binding done, we can either figure out uh, motor rotation. Well, actually, never mind. Scratch that. I'm going to leave this all on. We're going to go ahead and program up the board. Okay. If you have the Buddy RC board straight from the factory, it's gonna when you plug it, it's gonna say save, safe level is off. If you have a newer flash, it was actually a 1.17, it's a little bit better. Um, if you do that, when you first plug it up, it says error. Don't get nervous, it's, it just wants you to put in all your parameters. So if you look at this, it says no yaw input and safe level is off, that's fine. So you need to load the model up. So you press the right button, scroll down to model. Show motor, no, crap, load motor layout. 
enter go all the way to the bottom. I mean, it doesn't have, there it is, V-tail. Are you sure? Yes, I am. All right, notice it looks like a Y copter, but if you look at those arrows, they point in different, it's, it's stupid, but I'll explain it all to you. So back, back. Now we're going to do the uh, ACC calibration. If you're on a relatively flat level, you're good to go. You hit the button, it counts down. One, calibrating, and that's done. Okay, is there anything else? Okay, um, since we got a little plug into the uh, board, I want to set the low voltage. Oh, I thought I heard something go make a noise. It's not good. All right, so uh, we're going to do uh, ugh, scroll back up to miscellaneous settings. Hit that. We're going to go down to alarm one tenth volts, and we're going to enter and we're going to go to 10 volts. It's a three cell battery, which is 12.6 volts at full. When it gets down to 10 volts, which is 100, 10.0 volts, then it'll start beeping at you. So done and back. Um, the other thing we got to do is uh, set your mixer editor, mixer editor, enter, channel one, don't worry about, channel two, don't worry about, channel three, that changes from 100 to 120 on the throttle. We want to change that down to 100. Um, the reason that's that way is back in the old days of V-tails, um, they used really small motors in the back and you had to kind of do that to, um, to make it work. So back up channel 3, hit it again, they'll take you to channel 4. And that throttle you want to take from 120, oops, 120 back down to 100. If you forget to do this like I just did, um, the copter will kind of lift forward on you on hard acceleration. So when you're all done with that, we just say uh, back up. Oh crap. Back, just hit the back button and just save and you're good to go. And I think that's about it. Um, with this V-tail and the way I set it up, I'm also going to take my PIs down a little bit because the fact that they're 65 and it's just a little sensitive. So I'm going to knock it down to about 45. Um, that will take care of my aileron elevator and the rudder I don't care about. All right, throttle calibration, guys. We're going to do throttle calibration next. So props are off. Throttle to full. We're going to plug in the battery and very quickly hit the one and four button. Made one beep. Time is so hopefully you heard it, but it went beep. I pulled the throttle down, went beep, beep, beep. So now my throttles are calibrated. Uh, all, the, all the speed controls are calibrated to the board. So we're going to arm it, throttle up, and this one should be spinning clockwise, and it's not. This one should be spinning clockwise, and it is. This one should be spinning counterclockwise, and it is. This one should be spinning counterclockwise, and it isn't. So it's, that's not right. And that's right. So that's wrong. So that's, all right, counterclockwise, clockwise. So my, both my fronts need to be reversed. So we'll have to desolder one motor uh, or two of the wires and then resolder them back. So I'll show you how to do that in just a sec. All right, so we got to reverse these, uh, these two wires. And uh, so I like to use a clamp for this so I can keep up with what's going on. So I know that wire is loose. When I, when I desolder this wire, which random, I can use either wire, it doesn't matter. I want to keep my hands because I can't tell you how many times I've put wires down and, and lost what they were hooked to and then ended up soldering back to the same friggin' wire. Beautiful. A big old glob of solder on there. All right, that's one side. Do the other side. They're helping hand in there.
Beautiful. All right, so I'm going to button up the uh, heat shrink. I'm going to. Oh, probably out of focus, but I'm going to two face this sucker down. And I'm going to start putting the top back on. I think we're, we're getting pretty close. Okay, I got to hook the beeper up. My glass is back on because I can't see. And plus goes to the, this side. And I'm going to use my hot glue gun. And just stick this sucker up here somewhere. Just put a blob right there. Ah, stringy. Alright, so it's time to put the top on and uh, and see what happens here. So I have to take the screws obviously out of the arms, take the top back on and we'll get that all set up. Perfect. Perfect. I don't know if my two-faced tape is working or not, but it ought to hold it in there, right? So, just going to squish all that crap in there. Damn, it's a bunch of wires. I wish I made these wires shorter, but oh well. Wish a lot of stuff. Wish I had a full head of hair. Wish I had a lot of money. Wish my cats would move out and my kids. All right, I'm gonna button it up. All right. <clears throat> so you want to stick your top on. Take your little screw. Line up the rear spacer. Mash it down. Let's get your front and your back started, then the sides are much easier. This really is a very easy build compared to the other ones, a little bit harder to put together with all the extensions and stuff that goes with them. Take the sides in. You'll probably notice that the sides uh, are longer out the side here than the bottoms. And that's so the landing gear kind of has something to sit on top of so it won't get smacked in there. Okay, we're all screwed. Well, we got the top on, I mean. So we're going to put our sides on. Now, when you put them on, that goes towards the back like it's in motion just in case you're wondering. Um, I use these little pad things to kind of keep it all anchored in there real good. I just put one in front of each one of the holes. Like yat. And the zip ties form a dual purpose. By the way, these are 18 pound zip ties. Uh, you can get at Walmart, four inches. Um, that's all you need for this. But they're going to hold the uh, side on, just kind of line it up with the hole just clear right there. Squisher on there. Kind of holds it in place while you zip tie it. Now, not only does it hold the side on, but it holds your motor wires in place too. Um, so they won't get in places they're not supposed to be. So it's a dual purpose zip tie. Very graceful here. I'm telling you, it's worth the money. <laughs> Alright, that's one side. Nice and tight. Hopefully, a break loose uh, in an event of a crash. Not that anybody ever crashes, but in case that happens. So, let me get this other one on. Alright, we got to put some props on here. I just want to let you guys uh, in on the reason this thing flies so damn good. This is a prop that Sunny Sky says you should use. It's a 5-3 prop. Um, it's the equivalent of taking a Lamborghini and putting donut tires on it and saying, you know, 
in, in inspecting that to work. This motor can handle a lot more uh, power. That's what I use. It's got a little bit bigger uh, area here. It's longer. I mean, it literally is like two times, two and a half times the power that these put out. And it also makes the copter just rock steady. So we're going to install the props. Um, a little bit on props. You've got two clockwise and two counterclockwise props. This is considered clockwise. When you spin it as a clock, it pushes air down. And that's the back side of a prop. That's wrong. This is the side you put on. Most of the time I have numbers on there. Uh, some props like the, uh, oh hell, you got one around here? No, but like the 8-4 props, sometimes you'll see like dots in the back and that shows the back. But either way, so we're going to prop this thing up. I'm going to put a little Velcro on it. Um, it's pretty much ready to go. But as far as getting these, sorry, as far as getting these props, um, um, Ready to Fly Quads has a carbon version, which is much stiffer than this. I've got broken ones around here somewhere because that's what I've been flying out of this one. Um, you know, they don't, they don't, very hard to bend them. They're a little more brittle than these. These are uh, a little more flexible to take a little more abuse. Um, but, you know, these suckers, if they don't break, they'll go through the woods and they'll just, they'll just cut their own way through the, the trees. It's amazing. But when they break, they break. These kind of chip instead. So you can get these uh, carbon reinforced ones for about three bucks a pair at um, Ready to Fly Quads. Um, and these plastic ones, you can get them on eBay. If you look up 6x6x4.5 or uh, MyRCMark.com has them for very cheap, but the shipping's outrageous. But, I mean, I got, I think, 70 pairs for uh, like 75, 80 bucks. So 50 cents a prop, you can't beat it. Uh, I have gone through maybe 25 props so far out of the 140 I bought. Um, but, you know, they're cheap. So... They need a little balancing, not bad. They're they're pretty close, but I mean, I fly them usually without balancing because I don't give a crap. It's got a little bit of a vibration. This doesn't matter, but I did notice when I was putting the video camera in the front. Um, you'll see in my demo video. You can see sometimes we have a little bit of waves in the video and stuff like that. And that was from like you know when I ripped off the end of the prop on one side and not the other, and it was really out of out of you know the props were way out of balance. You know it, it would make some waves, but. You'll see the video, it's real clean, it's when I put a, a nice fresh set of props on before I went out there and ran through trees. So, um, uh, the camera I've shot the demo with is a little, uh, oh, what the hell is it called? Hold that thought. Okay, I'm back. It's called the Mobius Action Camera, and I got the wide angle version, which is like 125, 128 uh, millimeter wide. Pretty good spread. Uh, not quite as wide as the, uh, the GoPro, and it's not quite as good a quality but it's within 10 15 percent i'd say quality maybe 20 but it's exceptionally usable video uh, and it's small it weighs very little about an ounce and it just so mounts oops sorry I just have the battery on it but what i do is i mount my camera up here and i mount this underneath it and i put my battery as far back as i can um, as far as batteries go for fun flying around the yard i either use a 1300 or a 1500 glacier uh three cell battery and then for FPV um, I'm using a 2200 compact oh hell zippy compact 2200 it weighs 161 grams so it's not a lot heavier than a 1500 milliamp uh, glacier and uh, I hang that on there I get about a 10 minute flight with um, with a view camera not not with this but I haven't really done a long video I probably get nine nine and a half minutes even with the uh, with the uh, whatever the hell it's called um, action camera, Mobius, but um, with the 1300 milliamp pack I also have on here just for fun flying, I get a good seven minutes to fly around, around the yard, you know, kind of what I call naked without any cameras or anything on it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and mount the props up and uh, put a little Velcro on the bottom and uh, I guess I'll see this thing will fly. Alright guys, just a quick little uh, tutorial on, on prop balancing in case you don't know about it. Um, again, this is probably the wrong way to do it, but I use CA glue and uh, just put a tiny bit on the opposite side of the heavy side, a tiny bit more. That's too much. Yeah. So just dab off a little bit of glue. Oh, hell, I think I just took off a lot of glue. Oh, shit. Oh, well. And add some more glue. Good enough. And spray a little bit of kicker. And that sets it right up. 
then you can go to the next prop without having to worry about all the goo uh, getting on you or on things. But it's dead simple. It's a fun thing to do while watching TV. Um, let's see how far this one's out. Well, other side this time. Close enough. That's how you do that. Since we're being helpful here and trying to talk about things, um, there's a little tiny um, one and a half millimeter uh, screw on either side of this thing. Uh, what do you call it? Grub screw. And I had a couple of them come loose while I was flying. The only thing that will happen is your bell will fly off, and it doesn't even fly off during flying. It just seems to fly off when you crash. But either way, it would not hurt to go ahead and back these out one at a time and put a little bit of the uh, Loctite on it and then bring them back in and snug them back up again as far as, uh, you know, just being safe and a little, uh, you know, free tip from Simple Copter there, who breaks a lot of stuff. But, um, so that, that's a, another good idea, and I'll do that as soon as I turn the, TV, uh, the camera off, so... I bet y'all thought I really wasn't going to do it. But I am. Uh, interesting tidbit of something I just found out is that uh, these motors were actually hand wound. Can you imagine spending your whole day winding copper wire around these armatures all day long? So I was asking how come you know they can't just ramp up production? And he said, you know, that's they're all hand done. I was like, wow, I couldn't believe it. So the other thing I want to there we go tell you is with these props come these little adapters. So you need to find out which one fits nice and snug which is that one right there and uh, you know take it off there's little, gonna be little tiny pieces of uh, plastic tabbing at the bottom of the thing which you can't see but you want to have that in the very bottom so press that into your prop and hey right prop too cool I decided to go with the uh, the blues because the yellows they just don't match it's too dark so if I'm gonna make a gaudy copter I might as well make the whole thing gaudy and uh, the other thing is these things have a little uh, little holes through them to tighten up. If you've got a really small screwdriver, just be careful because those little cheap screwdrivers will break. I just use a little bit of this metal rod I got. Really tighten them up nice and snug. So, first prop. Sweet! That's good. Alright guys, we're going to fly this little uh, pink one we built yesterday and uh, see what she can do. Uh, let's this on it. And um, we got a beautiful place to fly uh, instead of my front yard as usual. So we can really ring it out a little bit more and go, go a bit faster. But here you go. So it'll loop, roll, do everything that a normal one will do. I'll be honest with you, it doesn't, I don't feel as good about aerobatics with this as a bigger one. I don't think it has enough momentum to do it, but, but these motors and these props will just go like, stink. Unbelievable. The five threes, you couldn't punch out of this stuff like this. Um, so. It'll go. Let's do a, a speed run. I can go out here and not hit the lake. Got a thing against going uh, in the water after a copter. Here we go. It scoots. I'm telling you, it is fast, fast, fast. A tree! So I'm not used to this uh, field. <laughs> Pulls about 40 amps at full throttle, so uh, need to have a pretty good uh, battery to do it with. This is just, I, I, I've had more fun flying this thing, and I'll be honest, when I first put it together, I thought, well, you know what, it's all right, but, uh, you know, it's not, it's not like a tricopter or V-tail, but the more I fly, the more I enjoy it. It's fun because you can just do it really close to you and not be quite as scared about losing your face if it, uh, you know, hits you. <laughs> so.
So it's a lot of fun. You can't see it at a real long distance. Of course, with the pink, it, it helps a lot. So I can get it out to 100 feet or so and still see it just fine. But FPV's unbelievable with it. You can just go through the woods and and uh, don't have to worry about, you know, so skinny, you don't have to worry about hitting as much. So I guess for like if you do a double, let's see, you do a double roll, kind of has a pause in it. It's not set up super super fast uh, response because it's just it doesn't need it. It's fun. So of course with the V-tail you're gonna have a lot better yaw. You know you got positive yaw. It's not mushy like uh, H copters and uh, H copters and uh, and standard X copters. So you know you go go into a yaw. It goes. When you stop, it stops. I'm gonna probably crash it in a tree. So it's pretty awesome. Uh, you'll enjoy the FPV footage. Um, of course, you probably already got that on the demo, but. Um, I really, really like this copter, and this is the fourth one I built, uh, fourth design I came up with to, to get to this point. Um, but you know, physical size, I don't know, probably 300, considered 300 or something like that. But um, really like this thing, and I hope you guys like it too. And um, it takes a good beating. I've only cracked an arm. I haven't broken an arm yet, and I fell from 60, 70 feet, uh, and it and it hit on its side. I was flying FPV, and I kind of kind of was using a cheap receiver, and it just didn't do too good at the distance I was out. And uh, cracked the thing. I've busted a lot of, not a lot, maybe four zip ties on the landing gear where it hit hard on the side. But I mean, it's pretty, you know, it's pretty stout the way it is. Um, so yeah, I'm sure you can break it. I mean, my, my FPV one, I hit a steel girder with it. And I think I've showed the video of that. And I don't have a video, but that's, <laughs> that was hitting a steel girder at 30 miles an hour. And all I had was two motors come loose and broke two props. Uh, I can't believe the speed control didn't get zapped. I mean, it's glued in there. It's it's just crazy that it didn't. I, I don't know what. It doesn't seem physically possible that speed control could still be sitting there, but it is. So, um, a lot of fun, and I hope you guys like it. Talk to you later. Bye.